Welcome to the Hampton Beach Village District Monthly Meeting. It is Wednesday, September 9th, 2015. Can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Anne and Jason, you're on right off. So do you have good news for us? That's not I want good news. <laughs> you can decide whether it's good or not. All right, great. Um, I'm Rayanne Dion, I'm the Kissing Conservation Coordinator. Jason Deshaun, Tom Flitter. Yep. So we were here a couple of months ago asking uh, for your support in a grant opportunity um, with the Piscataqua Region Estuaries Partnership. Um, we were looking for funding to um, allow us to work with the Rockingham Planning Commission to assess Hampton's um, eligibility for the community rating system. And so before I get into um, how that has gone, I just want to do just a quick refresher on what the community rating system is in case some of you weren't here when we talked about it uh, a couple months ago. The community rating system is a voluntary program um, that's offered by FEMA <coughs> through the um, National Flood Insurance Program. Um, <coughs> it's an incentive-based program where a community uh, receives credit for actions that we take to basically reduce our flood risk. Um, and there's 10 classes. Um, it's kind of in the reverse order. You start at class nine, which is um, kind of where we are, where at the beginning, um, and it works in 500 point increments. Um, once you get your first 500 points, you move to class nine. And when you reach class nine, um, those people in your community that have flood insurance through the National Flood Insurance Program can receive a discount. So each interval is a 5% um, decrease in your, um, your rate. So um, there are um, over 1,200 communities in the 50 states that participate in CRS. There are um, four communities in New Hampshire, um, Keene, Marlborough, Peterborough, and Winchester. Um, Rye used to be part of CRS and is, is um, in the process of uh, reapplying. Um, there's only one community in all those that's at class number one, which is the highest. Um, a majority of the communities out seven uh, are in between classes uh, 10 and 5 is where the majority of those communities fall. Um, so that's just kind of a general overview of what uh, CRS is. Uh, we think it's a great opportunity for Hampton because uh, we are one of the highest um, policy holders. Uh, we are the highest policy holder uh, in the state, so there's a lot of um, residents who could benefit from those discounts. Um, the other thing um, I just wanted to touch upon quickly, although it's not related to CRS, um, I think it may be of interest and kind of fits in with all of this. Um, <clears throat> the Board of Selectmen and your group did um, decided to send out a letter to residents um, to let them know about um, the FEMA maps um, being updated. Um, so there's a letter sent out encouraging people to, to go and find out what, um, if they're in a zone that may require flood insurance and whether or not that zone might be changing uh, with the preliminary maps. Um, we were told, based on the FEMA website, that those were supposed to be effective in September of 2015. Um, actually, the website still says that, um, and I actually called FEMA's um, map information exchange uh, to get kind of an update to understand if you know, obviously we're in the middle of September, is that happening or not? Um, they referred me to the Office of Energy and Planning to um, Jennifer Gilbert, um, who's kind of our main contact. Um, and on <clears throat> their website, they actually had a little explanation of where things stand with our maps. So I just want to read it briefly from uh, their website. Um, it says this is, um, so there's two, two counties in New Hampshire whose uh, FEMA firm maps are being uh, updated. It's um, Stratford County and Rockingham. So 
It says, due to an appeal and the 90-day appeal period for the Seabrook, <coughs> Seabrook Beach Village District, the maps for the communities in the Rockingham County project area will not be proceeding along with the Strathic County project map. The appeal is currently being addressed by FEMA, and the 90-day appeal period for the Seabrook Beach Village District is anticipated to start by the summer of 2015. The proposed effective dates for the maps in the Rockingham County project area is unknown at this time. The one thing I will um, comment on is they give a little flow chart of kind of how the approvals happen. And once this 90-day um, appeal period is resolved, there'll be an additional six months where they do public outreach before they become effective. So the, you know, thinking about, we don't know exactly when it's gonna get resolved, but at the earliest it would maybe be spring of 2016. Um, but as soon as, you know, we hear more information, I'd be happy to, to pass that along. So I'll turn it over to Jason to tell you where we are with CRS. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so basically where we stand right now is that the Town of Hampton applied for a grant through the Piscataqua Region Estuaries Partnership for the purposes of determining eligibility and applying to FEMA for acceptance into the Community Rating System Program. Uh, the good news is a couple of months ago we were notified that the town was awarded the PREP grant for that purpose, so that was great news for us there. Um, just so you know a little bit about the PREP grants, they were available for a broad range of environmental planning purposes. While the towns of Hampton and Rye were awarded grants for CRS, PREP grants were issued to other area towns for other projects as well. Uh, for example, the towns of Greenland, Northampton, Rollinsford, and Stratham had received PREP grants to adopt stormwater management regulations. The towns of Exeter and Stratham are working on fertilizer application setbacks as part of their grant awards. And some towns are also working, of those towns, some of them are also working on incre increasing wetlands buffers. So it's a broad program that you could get funding for, and, and we obviously went after funding because this is an important uh, task for us right now. Um, regarding our grant award for CRS, the Rocky and Planning Commission is committed to working with us on the required tasks leading up to our application with FEMA. Uh, we've been meeting with Julia LaBranch of the RPC on timeline and initial project tasks at this time. Um, we're also at this time working to determine which activities are most likely to earn Hampton CRS points so that we can reach the 500 required for acceptance into the program at the Class 9 level. And the community, as Rayanne noted, would earn a 5% 5 discount on the flood insurance premiums at that level and 5% at, at every step after that. Um, Rayanne and I have been reviewing the CRS Quick Point Checklist and reached out to staff um, to assist with this effort. A um, few examples of activities that are likely to earn us points include outreach. That would be things like flyers and brochures in the town hall and library, uh, mailings and so forth um, regarding flood hazards, flood insurance, flood protection measures and other and or the natural and beneficial functions of floodplains, the flood prone, res flood prone residents and the community as a whole. Um, for that task, you get an average of 90 points based on uh, past history and, and what FEMA is saying has been awarded in the past, up to 380 points, but I'd say sticking with the average is probably 90 point average we get for that. High regulatory standards, we already have strong floodplain uh, regulations within our zoning ordinance amended this March consistent with uh, the, uh, the review by uh, the Office of Energy and Planning for the updated maps that, that are obviously on delay right now. Um, additional points can be earned by further amending those regulations as well. There's an average of 166 points gained there, up to 2740. So that would be uh, pretty intense regulations of <laughs> large magnitude there. Um, map information service. We have an online GIS right now um, on the town's website. It includes a flood data layer. We also have the, the planning office has the proposed scheme of maps on its website that people can access and we routinely assist the public in navigating that information. So there's an average 138 points that can be earned there up to 140. And I'm sure we could get some points for the activities we're doing there right now. Um, we'll also need to demonstrate a likelihood that we will qualify for CRS, the CRS program before FEMA holds its initial verification visit with the town. So this checklist review that we're doing and all these other activities are important at this early step so that they come in the door and, and, and they'll assist us at that point in time. Um, We've also learned from the Rockingham Planning Commission that the town of Exeter earned significant points for conservation land that it holds. Um, there's an open space preservation credit among those ways to earn points. Um, since Hampton is an abundance of vacant marshland that's free of 
it's going to be kept free from development, there could be an opportunity to assist us in gaining more points. Um, we're at the early stages of the project, um, and we're working diligently, as I've been explaining here, and Rayan is as well. Um, based on the grant award, reward, award requirements in coordination with the RPC, we would anticipate the project would be completed somewhere in the vicinity of summer 2016. So it's a much larger scope project than we even anticipated when we talked early in this process. So there's a lot involved here. We're, we're thankful that we got the grant and we're hitting the ground running on it. So we'll be glad to answer any questions you have. Does any audience have any questions? I have one question. When, we, when you were here the last time, I think there was a cost Share. Am I correct, boss? No, nope, yeah. you're correct. You're correct. You made a motion to share. Is this still going to be a class? Now that you have this grant. Yes. Yes. That, yep. that was part of the, uh, the grant funding for the project that is certain now. We were there. Yeah. I guess the yeah. biggest question I have then is um, when are we going to have to pay this cost? This year or next year? Um, I'm not sure of the answer to that at this point in time. Well, just keep in mind that, you know, that the, our books close, you know, yeah. this year. And so if we if we don't pay it this year, then perhaps we could remember to budget it, you know, into our budget next year. If I remember correctly, it was, was it $2,500, our share? He, so, yes. Yeah. 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 Well, 50. We were looking for. Oh, they're trying to overcharge us. We were looking for a total of 2,500. Which is no problem. Yeah. Okay. So whenever, if you need and the board of selectmen matched. Yeah. Right. And if you need the money, let me know. Because it's not a problem. Okay. So that we'll pay it this year. But, you know, whenever it's, whenever it's necessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're um, we're waiting on um, some more information from Prep on the kind of how it could get paid out and how they reimburse us. So um, once we get those details from them, that'll help us if they answer that question. If I'm hearing you, what you're saying is the earliest will be potentially in the rating system would be October of next year. I mean that's. That's a possibility. I mean, we have to go through the process, the application process, the verification visits, uh, accumulating the points. There's some tasks we need to, you know, to accumulate those points. But I, I would say that's probably a good estimate. You have to and apply. someone only does verification visits in certain times of the year. You can't just call them. And one of the things that um, RPC was looking to do is we can try to coordinate. Since RIE is also doing the same thing, have our visits at the same time. And just do you know the time of the year FEMA does these visits? There's one in the fall and one in the spring. Uh, well, obviously, we're not going to be inviting them. Fall. Are you going to be able to invite them next spring so we don't have to continue this up to a following year? I think it's, it's really going to depend on the point. So one of the reasons why we reached out to other, so we went through the checklist. We identified ones that we're we think that we're working we're working on those activities. We're not sure there's you know a range of points that are offered. You know we don't know what portion of the range we're in. That's where RPC is going to be able to help us identify the specific numbers. What the challenge is going to be if we if if it's if we get to 500 points quickly, then I think spring wouldn't be a problem. If it ends up being that we have additional activities that we need to do to get those points then that's going to prolong it and, and make it um, something that might have to happen in October. Um, you know, it depends on what activities we select. If we um, notice that maybe we need to strengthen some regulations that we can find, we can get points there, well, that's something we have to wait for um, a warrant article, you know, we have to do as a town vote. So that's why it's important to go through the list and really pick kind of like the low-hanging fruit, like where can we really um, get the most, most points for things that we're doing. So... Where, where this process has been going on for quite some time, and it's going to go on for an additional significant period of time, could you shoot toward a, an 8 rating <laughs> rather than the 9 rating if you're going through the process? We're going to try to get as many points as we can. Exactly so not. we're not, we're not going to stop at 500. We'll go through that whole checklist and identify all the points that we can. It's just that they have to be in. 500 chunks to move. Yeah, I understand. It's certainly that's more challenging yeah. as you get up. Yeah, 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 it's, absolutely. It just, it's a little bit frustrating. It's such a complex project to get the discount where we 
have so many people who can benefit from the discount. Absolutely. So, but, so right, we'll just have to wait and see if you're able to. I mean, I was very encouraged, as Jason pointed out, um, that um, Exeter, they didn't go for grant funding um, from PrEP to help on CRS, but they're pursuing CRS as well. And they got a substantial amount of points for their conservation land. And, I, you know, that's something that, again, RPC is going to be able to help us with mapping that, making sure it's in the areas that we can, um, that we qualify for. But we do have a lot of land, open space, and um, marshland that's protected. So, I mean, there's a chance I think they got well over 500 points just for that activity. So, I mean, but we don't know until we map it. And, you know, it's just... Um, Would you be willing to come back in the, a few months from now and kind of give us an update on where we're at? Of course, absolutely. Uh, what would time frame would work for you so you'd be in a better position to assess the potential points for algae? It's, well, I mean, it's tough because we've just done our initial so, yeah. review. Starting um, meeting with RPC and everything. Right. So it's, yeah. So there's more meetings and activity that has to be. No. I'll pick a time, whatever time. Early, what, early 20th of February? I think Are you, you're, they're going to want to. I, I would or say we can come back in late November, early December, and give you an update. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I would rather be at a point where you have something substantial to report, not just to say we're still working on it. Right. Kind of thing. But we so were requested to come in and give an update on where we where Yeah, we're I request you come right. and see. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying we like to keep these updates flowing. Sure. But we want to do it in a way that gives you time to report additional sure. information. So, well, yeah. we can touch base with you and let you know where we stand and if you know, we need more time than yeah. we can be. But I, I mean, <clears throat> one of the, the challenges is, you know, we, we have to get, there's just pieces to get our relationship established with RPC and, you know, schedule time with them. You know, unfortunately, it's not something we get to dedicate our entire day to every single day of the week. So, um, but I, I absolutely think we'll have more to report come late November, early December. Well, so. whatever, well, would you like to come to the December meeting or January, whichever one you're comfortable with? <coughs> Let's go with December. Let's go. Okay, yep. fine. Hopefully yeah, you'll have We'll uh, keep in touch between that and then the change. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah, and you know, as you know, if we get to a point where we, you know, if it's before then and we have an initial number, you know, we can, we'll be happy to come in before then. Sure, we just let us know. Yep. So, just one quick question, and I'll let you go. Mm -hmm. So, the, this five percent or ten percent, whatever we get to, <laughs> yep. is that automatic, or do we have to go to our insurance guy and say, hey, we got five hundred points, we're supposed to get five percent off? Is it is it automatic or? I don't. I don't exactly know how the relation, how that information is related to insurance agencies. The, it's um, so the town of Hampton qualifies based on our current regulations to be part of the national flood insurance program, and that's what CRS is part of. So I'm assuming there's got to be a database that lists the towns, and when you call in to get your insurance, that they check it against it or something along those lines. Um, I don't know. I've not seen it. Anything that suggests you get something in the mail that you would share it to your insurance agent. Like it would be something that they would have on their end knowing that we're in the program. So, but. Excellent. Thank you very much. Right. Well, Jason said he wanted it to be announced that it was a, oh, Jason. a workshop. Yeah, so on, on um, September, it's on, if you go on to the, um, the main um, Hampton NH.gov web page, there's a little slideshow on the front, and there's a, um, a notice about a dune restoration workshop on September 30th. Um, there's, if you've been down to the state, um, the state park, there's actually a um, a beach grass garden, community garden, and um, as part so as part of that program, they're doing some community outreach. They're going to be harvesting some of the beach grass and um, transplanting it. Some of it will be down in Seabrook. Um, Maybe if there's enough left over, an opportunity if there's homeowners who are interested in, in getting some and using it on their property. So um, it's a nice opportunity to come and learn more about the garden and um, see what they're what they're doing. So I, I believe it's 4:30 to 7 or something along those lines. But there's information on how to register um, on our, our town website. Yeah, it's 4:15 so. to 7:30 on the brochure. Thank you. The news like right? I know what they're talking. Yeah. About. Thank you for explaining. I, I see it all the time, and I, I didn't quite know there's no sign or anything. 
there's just it's roped up. It's roped up. And people have been respecting it. I haven't seen anybody jumping through there. Sure. I know they're supposed to do some signage, and maybe that that's in the works. But yeah, it um, it should be interesting. Thanks for all your efforts. All right. Thank, thank you. Much. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. You want to give us some updates? Sure. I'm gonna, it's not on the agenda, but then we have Mike talk and then we're going to have Linda talk. Okay. So it's up to Kathy to go fast. I'll can go you, fast. <laughs> okay. Can you, can you wait till after Linda? All right. Okay. Um, Kathy Silver, Blue Ocean Discovery Center. Um, we had a very successful season, but like we all know, it's not over yet. Okay. The, um, and we still need volunteers. If you want to help the Seafood Festival, just come to the Discovery Center, find me, I'll put you to work. Okay, so it's um, this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We're going to have a Halloween party for children in October, on a Saturday in October. I'll tell you more about that next month. We've got um, birthday parties available to, that you could volunteer at. And of course, we have the big New Year's Eve celebration, which I assume we'll be doing again with the district. Um, our mission statement is to protect marine life in the Gulf of Maine through research, education, and inspiring action. So I wanted to tell you about some action that you can take. The International Beach Cleanup and New Hampshire Coastal Cleanup occurs on Saturday, September 20th. You'll see school children down here on Friday, but we can always use people to participate in that. And this is individuals, groups, small groups. We've got a Girl Scout group. We've got a, your people in your neighborhood. If you want to participate, you can just go on our website. There's lots and lots of cleanups on Saturday the 20th. The one at Hampton Beach will be at 1 o'clock at the seashell. But every beach along the coast. To give you an idea of just how encompassing this is, and last year we picked up 24,639 cigarette butts. So we count everything. So we'll teach you how to do all this. So, yeah, 24,000 cigarette butts. Yeah. Okay, so that's it. Okay? All right, Linda, we're going to get you out. We'll get you out before six. Thank you for letting me speak. Um, the Hampton Garden Club, which I'm a member of, it's always a conflict. It's always the same night, so that's why I'm always rushing from this meeting to get there. Chamber does a business after I was a lot on this night too. Yeah. I missed that. Oh. Okay. So and that's a lot um, of fun that I'll be using. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So just an update on the park entrance. Um, the plan is that a new fence will go up after everything is after the seafood festival. The new fence will go up. Um, two pear trees will be planted, flowering pears, not fruiting pears. Um, flowers, perennials, day lilies, um, daffodil bulbs, brush and sage, cat mint. I know this is probably doesn't make sense to a lot of people, but they're perennials, they're hardy, they're drought tolerant. Um, that's really important because that area gets a lot of sun and um, it's very dry. So all that will be happening right after the seafood festival. Um, and most importantly, I, I wanted to thank our volunteers, and a couple of them are here. Without the volunteers um, cutting grass and mowing and trimming and watering diligently, the flowers would not be blooming, and they're still blooming. They're gorgeous. Um, if you go by the Sea Memorial, um, the flowers there really look nice, and the Ashworth, the huge urns are now cascading with um, sweet potato vine. That's that chartreuse color thing. So Madeline Good and Justin Terry Smith, and there's another Terry, and I don't know her last name. Walker. Walker. Terry Walker. Walker. So we have. P. -A -P. Parker. P. Parker. Thank you. Thank you. What's the accent? Um, yeah. Linda Redenbach, Richard Rainier, and Ed St. Pierre have all helped with mulch and all the many things that um, we start doing early in the spring. So I just wanted to acknowledge every everyone in their effort. And a big thank you to the owners of Dodge Agway who let me borrow a little red wagon. So if you see Terry or I or Ann and the ladies, all the ladies who order on Memorial, with that little wagon, we're able to carry two, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, twelve gallons of water in one load. Um, that's, that's heavy. 
I mean, that wagon, when you're pulling it, you really know. So we do that. We make like two trips. So that's, that's how we're able to carry, um, keep those flowers blooming because we're able to carry, pull the wagon along and, um, and water. So um, they, the plants are doing great. If you ask any of the volunteers, there's not a day that we're not watering and doing deadheading, whatever. And where pedestrians and tourists come by and will ask us about the flowers and ask us who we are and um, and say how, how much they appreciate what we do, especially around the memorial, because so many vets come there with their families and take pictures. And when Betty Moore was here, she was saying about the icon of the beach. The lady by the sea is the icon, and she is photographed at night, in the morning, at sunset, sunrise. Um, so it's really important that that area is well kept. We pick up trash and stuff like that too, bottles and that. So anyway, that's my kind of wrap up report. So thank you for allowing me to speak. And you I'm, I'm moving right along. Sorry, wait, yeah. before you run off, um, you <laughs> described you're going to buy some fences and trees and different things. Can you estimate on how much that might cost? Well, you have the receipts. Oh, okay, you already bought it. Thank already done. Much. Well, the fences and us, that's, that's the state. I want, you know, oh, that's the state's okay. responsibility. Is, okay, right, they're doing the fence. Thank you very much. Good for your choices. Thank you. Have a good time. Okay, I, I asked Mike to speak because we've uh, we have some issues with lighting and the new law, and um, he's working on some, some fixing things. So I'd like to update on the on the parking lot. Right. Uh, I've got the fence guys. We're, we're much closer now. I, I've got okay. this, all the stuff that, so that's coming soon. Um, we. Finally, have succeeded in getting the clue, what we call the clues lot, uh, established. Uh, the buildings came down two weeks ago. Now, we actually opened this past weekend. Uh, we've been working with Unitel on lighting. There have been a couple of issues. We have two 1,000 watt halo, what they call halo lights. One is on Tuttle, heading towards Fellows. The other is on Fellows, heading towards Tuttle. There's been a glare problem. A little bit of a glare problem. Uh, I talked with John White today. Uh, he told me that he noticed that the lights have been tipped or tilted down more on fellows headed headed uh, north. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we've been working all week with Unitel. Tomorrow, Unitel is coming back. They're going to lower the light uh, by the Regal Hotel, and they're going to put what they call a shade on it which will help deflect the light. Uh, the one on Fellows, they're going to just tilt a little bit more down. Um, the reason why we're lighting the lots is basically it's really a safety issue and is to keep people that we don't want in there out of there. Uh, I've had a number of telephone calls from neighbors thanking us uh, in the past two days uh, for the way we're maintaining it and the way it's working out. Um, there was a little bit of problem at 3 o'clock in the morning uh, down there, but we ha I have addressed that with the police, and we have told the police that mm -hmm. to ask them when they're making their patrols to just drive through. We have a policy. We do do overnight parking, but the policy is you cannot sleep in your cars and you cannot drink alcohol in the lot, and they will enforce that rule and regulation. There happens to be two houses in that neighborhood that create problems for everybody in the neighborhood. Uh, they're known as the party houses for kids. Mm -hmm. And what happens is after everybody gets out of work at 1 or 2 o'clock, there's two gathering spots down in that particular area. And uh, one you read in the paper was 152 Ashworth Ave. There was a 27-person bust this past weekend down there. So I think what happens is just the neighborhood in the overflow. Contrary to belief, the Wallies and the Goat and people like that have not created a problem. In fact, that's been ver we've had a good working relationship with those people. Um, it's more individual homes that where the problem comes from. As for the lot here at the fire station, uh, we've had an excellent year. We are going to keep that lot open this year probably through mid-November because there is a large amount of concerts in October. No there are more concerts in October November than there were in June and July. 
uh, was a lean year for concerts at the casino, but they picked up on a large scale. And there are a couple of big events. There's a big road, uh, marathon road race. I think it's the first or second weekend in October. Yeah. 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 Well, there are two. There's, there's Reach the Beach and there's yeah, so the big uh, mini marathon. And the mini marathon brings in almost six, 7,000 people. And the week before is the bicycle. Bicycles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd be happy to answer any questions. My goodness, a lot paid now? No, we, we our so intention is packed. right. It's hard packed, and it's not our intention at this point in time to pave the lot. We like to work with it for a year to see what it looks like. We're work. We are, the way we're parking the car is uh, is what we call the length of the lot. So they face, the cars face out towards Ashworth Ave. So the cars are parked from south to north, facing that, facing east. Right. Is some of the lot being used for le the least spaces from the area? We, we, we had five lease spaces so far, so far this summer. The lot, I think, is going to do well. There is, the comments we're getting is there is um, no parking facilities at the south end of the beach. And we're getting people, we've had a number of inquiries this weekend from people in that, like Concord, Boston, Atlantic Ave, places like that, because there's just no place for people to park their cars. The other thing now is most of the hotels have gone to a policy of one room, one car, not one room and three cars. So we're getting a lot of referrals from like the Regal, the Blue Jay, uh, the flagship, people like that, and for that something, and then we're getting it from the main sale, Pelham's, the uh, Grandview, not Grandview, but the uh, Beachview, people like that. So we're doing well with, with our overnight business. We charge $25 for overnight. Our overnight policy is 3.30 in the afternoon to 10.30 the next morning. If you want to stay the next day, you just pay whatever the daily fee is for that. We charge hundred dollars. Right. We charge a hundred dollars a week. Our weekly rate is a hundred dollars. Go Saturday to Saturday. Mm -hmm. Pretty reasonable. Okay. Yeah. I have a question about fencing. Yes. When, when are we doing the fencing? Chuck has the yeah. information here. You just got it. Okay. Um, it, um, some of the pins that were done, I assume, by the clues. They had no, a survey. it was not done by the clues. My they had a survey done. Did you know that? Well, I've, I've had two conflicts about that. Two, two different people. I, I understand that Ernie Cody did a survey. I don't know who Ernie Cody did the survey for, whether it was for one of the abutters or whether it was for the clues. When I Kathy clues, clues, I spoke to Kathy both sides. The pins at both sides. Kathy Clue said there was a survey done on that property that she had done. And she actually cut down a tree um, in that area when she had it done. There is a pen right by where a tree was cut down. Really? Actually, if you go down, uh, Maureen, uh, there are two big white poles. Yes, one of the, who put those, those in? Rows. We put those oh, Okay, on. that was my next so question. That's where, that is where we found two of the pens, so that is out there. The, the house that is on Fellows, yeah. the yellow house on Fellows, mm -hmm. there is a pen on the corner of his driveway in the road, yeah. and there is a pen at the end of his property line, and the line is not a straight line. Right. It kind of yes, goes, it goes at yeah. Then when we come to Kathy's house, uh, the lady, Mary the Ellen. Little, what's her name? Mary Ellen. Mary Ellen. Uh, her, we're going, we need to make an accommodation for her. Her driveway is on our property, okay? Yeah. And we, I've been working with her, and we have, will come to a, a reasonable conclusion that we'll gain the space we need, but allow her to still have her driveway. That's the one that's on top. I, I know where you are. Um, would that be a lease situation? Like for a dollar or something that will, like that? That? Will, that will be some up to the commission to make that decision. Well, that's what I was wondering. I, I would like, because um, I'm concerned about, is that the only conflict that we might have? Yes. There'd be no conflict on the other house at all. Okay. 
Our intention is to bring the fence in roughly six inches from the property line. The back, the back line of the fence will be six inches from the edge of our property line. Okay. The fence is six, six feet. Six feet. Um, six feet solid white vinyl. And that goes on the back. That doesn't back. go all around. On the side, it, on the it back, comes out. It will come up a little bit on the side. And then, okay. it, then, it, then, it, then it angles down. Halfway down, and it'll angle down, so it'll give it the same look as if you're looking at the line on the left. They have that really nice fence there, and then it has an angle down. Mm. And it have the same look as that, so it'll fit in nice, nice. with the neighborhood. Thank you, that's lovely. So the only in and out will be on Ashworth Ave when the fence is complete. Well, that that may be a problem. We may have to have an, an out on what we call the upper corners of the two lots. We've been monitoring all summer. People who come out of that lot do not take a right to down Harris Ave, I can tell you that. They take a left and get on to Ashworth Ave. So what we'll end up probably doing is having, well, we, you have a roll right along the front, then you're going to have a middle roll, then a back roll. They'll come out and maybe take a left and go out either on the tunnel, on, on the second roll up nearest the road, or on to, on to uh, fellas. <coughs> the fence is going the fence coming up both Tuttle and Fellows will come about a third of the way up from the back lot line. <coughs> All set. Oh okay. okay. Now when we talked about this lot here. And do you have any issues with the, I know we call it the royal property, it's not royal We property. do have an issue with the royal property that we're going to have to address with uh, a four-foot fence from the corner of Brown Ave to the corner of the building, and then along from where the fire department fence is to the corner of the royal building. We're having a problem with kids in there. They think it's a playground. Uh, it's the neighborhood. Uh, but for us to protect our clientele, the, I mean, that is our basically our big overnight lot, and we're filled 90% of the time this year. And also, our week, that's where we put a lot of our weeklies. Okay. And, and what's the solution for that? Pardon me? A what is your... A fence. We're going to put a, a, probably a four, if we put a four-foot high fence, you know the fence that we have along the back mm -hmm. lot between us and the fire department? The fence yeah. about that height will okay. serve its purpose. All right. Just a black chain link fence just like that, it will look fine. Do we have any signage up there? We do. Does it, does it just say no trespassing? What is the signage? The signage says, please, please keep out, no trespassing. Okay. Should we and it says reserve lot. Car, you will be t if you put your car in there, Without permission, you will be told, and we have told 22 cars so far this summer. <laughs> wow! Yeah, and uh, it's about I think it's a buck and a quarter to have your car towed. That is 150 now. Well, it may, I, uh, whether maybe Dave's <laughs> giving us a break. <laughs> <laughs> but we work very closely with the police. If we have a car towed, we notify, we call the police, <coughs> notify the police, have Dave come down, tow the car. Uh, we had two cars towed out of the clues lot. This weekend, one fella came down and said, We're very nice about it. He said, I left my car here for three days. Where do you have it told? <laughs> well, it was told three days ago. <laughs> wow. You may want to consider getting a sign that says, We're not responsible for contents in the cars that are parked there. Yeah, we're, we're thinking about coming up with a placket that we're going to start giving people mm -hmm. where it will uh, kind of a hold harmless type of. Yeah. Uh, thing changing our way we give it if you notice the casino and um, the blondo people give a long ticket and on their long ticket they have rules or regulations on their ticket we're coming to the sorry it has to happen but we're coming to that I think it's a good idea yeah. and a, a way to offset the cost I think the blondo used to have coupon on the back yeah he doesn't anymore well he doesn't have a business anymore right <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, for what? The, uh, Bonkers. He had bonkers. Dollar off a 
a, a pizza or oh, a yeah. hamburger or something like that. So maybe you can get someone to sponsor it and right. uh, pay for them. I see. I'll talk to the marketing director. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Mike, are you going to do the Fence Memorial this year? Yes. Do you have an idea of the call? Oh, I, I'm sorry. The Fence and Royals? No. I don't, I don't, depends on where we are in the budget. Yeah, if we have enough, we'll do it. Do we'll yeah, you have any idea what it would cost? We're, we're going to talk to uh, Latin this week when we get the other one. We've been working closely with Latin. He gave, us, thing he gave us the best price when we, we sent okay, out the good work. Yeah. The other thing we did, uh, we're in the process of watering the shed. We met with them today. Uh, Reed's Ferry is going to, we have a 10 by 12 shed going in to uh, the Clues lot. Um, and that's right. So that, the, the deal with the shed, when we did this parking lot here, the town agreed to buy the shed. Right. And Chief Silver at the time ran out of money from this building and he said he would put it into the budget. And when we talked about it, and time went. So we bought the shed that we have. And I said, we're going to need a shed for another location. So I talked to Fred Welch. He says, if you have that in writing, um, the town will pay for the shed. So we, we're going to show them the original agreement with the uh, town. Hopefully it's there. And um, submit the uh, bill for the shed to the town. And we will have a bathroom at the Clues Lock. So Mary, <laughs> Mary Louise will be happy. That's important. There's no uh, I mean, there public. Is sewer there. We have. Yeah, we have. Yeah. We, I met yeah, with this. I, 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 I must say the town has bent over backwards in working with us on trying to help us speed things up. I met with the water and so the sewer and drain department yesterday for about an hour, and they there are three connections that we can mm -hmm. hook into. There's hopefully one right in the right by the shed on Ashworth Ave, right by where the two drains are. Yeah. Yep. There's a, they think there's a sewer connection there. There should be one on the right-hand side, there should be one on the left-hand side, and then there should be one over by, right past uh, Mary Ellen's house. Right. Because they had a bathroom there in the, in the cruise right. in the store. Yeah. So we're going to put the shed up in the front, so right. we're trying to get it as close to that as we can. Are you talking about a public access bathroom? No, this no. is strictly an employee. This is a, for employees only. Will we have a ribbon cutting for the bathroom? <laughs> yes, we will. You can be the first. Okay. Yes. I just have a question. I'm a resident on Fellowstown. Yeah. And um, Mark Toomey, my husband and I have been living there for five years or so now. And uh, we appreciate everything that's been going into the parking lot. That's not the question. But now it's kind of come up from what I'm hearing. The fence isn't going to surround the lot. And then cars are going to either come out Tuttle or Fellows. And isn't well, this the majority of cars. Uh, that's not my question. Oh. Uh, is this at an Ashworth address? And from what I understood, because I, I emailed both of you mm -hmm. in the beginning. Um, I thought the, the entrance and exit would only be on Ashworth Ave because it's an Ashworth address. No, it's it's more than Ashworth Ash. It's more than an Ashworth address. It's also a there is a Fellows address and there is a Tuttle Avenue address there. There are multiple buildings that the Clues owned on that property. But uh, there were, in addition to the stores, there were two houses, uh, both both of which one faced Fellows and one faced Tuttle. Okay. Um, well, with that being said. Uh, I know that I wasn't here for the vote, but I'm a little concerned about access coming onto, say, our street and also Tuttle because there are children on both the streets. And I know you said you've been monitoring the flow of traffic and they won't come up here. But who's to say that they won't? <coughs> I don't think people I, 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 for one, have an almost two year old that likes to run around. And if we're allowing more public access, it's flow through, that means that we're going to have a lot of class cars going through, and there's a lot of kids on the street. I can tell you, the tunnel is at that end street, 99% of the people that are going to take, when they come out of the lot, they're going to have to take a right to get on to Ashworth that, because if you go down tunnel, you're going to go into Marsh. On well, Harris, I can tell you that we've been monitoring Harris Ave, right. and, and my understanding is the clues ran a parking lot there. 
Yeah, a lot of people didn't like the parking lot that was there. Well, I, you know, and yeah. we like that this is going to be a monitored parking lot, and that there's going to be the precinct is in charge of this, and with you guys. And but I thought that the um, fencing was going to go around, from what I understood, based on the plants that were set up for this. I'm not sure there was the intent to enclose the whole parking lot. There was to enclose about the back plus a third coming up the side. I can tell you, we will monitor it. If it does present a problem, we'll address the problem now. And um, what about signage left turn only? If right. right. That's right what I was thinking. Is there any way that we could say you yeah. have to go yeah. that way? Right. Yeah. And that's that would be right. good. Because it won't be uh, the way the lot's set up. It's going to be a couple cars that would go out that way. The rest would come out the other way, I think. What they used to do, they used to have the cars facing Fellows Ave when they park. They face right. in towards Fellows Ave. We're not doing that. We're facing, the cars are facing Ashworth Ave. So they're going to have to go and take a right before they can even take a left. I just, I'm just, i just concerned because there's a lot of kids, in, not just my child, but there's no. a lot of kids that come out and and run around and, you know, between me I can and tell you that Fellas Ave gets a lot of traffic other than from just parking. Right, it's always concerned yeah. about yeah. how people are coming through. I think a lot of, I don't know where it all comes, whether it's the Yard or the Marina or... Yeah, I don't it's know. a lot I of also, I, I talked to two neighbors to today who tell me that there are two private parking lots on Harris Ave. Is it? I've heard that. Yeah, there are two private parking lots on Harris Ave where they do valet service. I believe I believe that. Um, are you talking about the street? Or are you talking street. about people's People are yards? Using the valet cars down onto the street and the parking cars on the street because a person approached me about it this morning around ten o'clock. I was happen to be down. He's a longtime resident on Harris Ave. He said. Can you address this problem? And I said, I can't address it, but you could go to the police department or to the town manager. Right. And he said that he knows the person that's doing it. I said, just report it. Are they getting the exemption, do you know? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're parking cars. I have spoken to Jamie Sullivan about this. They're yeah. physically parking cars on the street. Right. I've that's spoken to him, and doing. he said that's illegal. I said, I know. So. Yeah. What happens now? So it, it needs to be, I, if I that know person that knows, knows the actual name of the people, right. did he, this person say he would actually go? I told him that's what he I hope so. I told him to go talk to him. Because we've been, too, no, 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 but it was, we were trying to right. do parking stories, yeah. and so I spoke with Jamie, but um, I also spoke with Richie as well. Yeah. And uh, they're both aware that this is happening. What's going on? I think on the with town <laughs> is trying to address the whole yeah. beach parking issue. I yeah. mean, it's a... It's a, it's a problem. It, you just don't have enough parking for the clientele. Right. Yeah. Well, I have that. I'm going to bring up after. So, I, um, any other questions for Mike? I just have one other little question. Yeah. Um, when you come out of Tuttle Ave, yes. When it's not summer, the street across Old Street, it, it go leads to. Um, Ocean, Ocean Boulevard. Boulevard, yeah. So you're going to have people it's Only in the winter time. Whoa, 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 whoa. Right, only in right. the winter. Yeah, I just said, not, yeah. not during the summer, but during the winter. But you you're still have to go crisscross over there in order to get there. Well, that's what they do in front of John's house. John H. Street going to I Street. Mm -hmm. But we're not we're planning to operate on Street. Street yeah. But they but will cut. Right, same on Bright. You can see. We're not planning to operate the pack lot in the winter. Okay. We're, we're, so ta we're talking, we're talking uh, probably the you know, first part of May until the first part of November at the, at the most. Yeah. 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 Oh, I mean, you, too many problems trying to operate yeah, yeah. in the winter. <laughs> Plowing and all of that. Okay? All right, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. So because we're talking about parking, I, and, I, and I know nothing about it because I just found out um, from a couple of residents on Babcock, they are eliminating parking the, the town. Does anybody know anything about that? Yes. Yeah. You're talking about Susan Lane, uh, Diane, Joey, and all of that. Yes. And the, no why would they want to get rid of the, the parking One for the side locals. of the street. Mm -hmm. The other side you can park, but one side of the street you cannot. And, and I certainly understand that living there. I mean, if I can park in my driveway and that's it. Mm -hmm. It is not illegal at this point for people to park. 
on the side of your house, the police will come down. They will not do anything unless they block your driveway. I understand that, but here's the problem. Here's what the problem is. The problem is, it is all of the student workers. Yeah, that who work are coming in to work in restaurants. Yeah. Well, this is what this is one of the reasons we did the lot. This is one of the reasons um, the Hampton Beach Commission we're working on things. I'm planning on meeting with um, coasts, see if we can get, get some type of shuttle service down here. We need to get inexpensive. Also I have some. I have a parking lot next to One Ocean Boulevard. At 4.30 in the afternoon, when the all-day boat comes in, it empties out about 80%. They will not let you park there, even if you want to pay them, unless you have a fishing ticket in your hand. They are down over $90,000 this year so far in parking revenue. And that's DOT? That's yeah. Ports and Harbor. Oh, that's right. That's so Ports and Harbor. Ninety thousand dollars plus down in parking revenue, and I don't understand why at four thirty they cannot let right. people who work on the beach at night. That's when the waitresses and the bartenders come in for the second shift. I don't understand why they cannot park in there. They get, that's the cheapest place to park. Five dollars all day. The other, the other issue is I have had a conversation with Victor Michael. Who does the town lot? Uh, they're they're looking at the Church Street property again. That there are two. I didn't realize there were three lots on Church Street property. No. Uh, and I guess there's one that's supposedly a lease lot that the town. And I guess they're not doing any leases. And I suggested to Vic that, that maybe they talk about a waste, uh, an employee parking lot, and up there. And it's not that far to walk from there right. down to the sea catch or the boardwalk or... But the town, I don't know. I mean, the town has their great lot by the police station, but they're so underutilized on their other lots that the um, island path lot is empty all the time. And, that, and these are places we could make solutions. Um, and they don't seem to want to do anything about it that way. I'd love to sit down with them, come up with something. Maybe we could lease that lease lot. And... Uh, we could work with with the different restaurants where they. I've talked to Kevin. Um, he manages the Sea Catch. I've talked to Jimmy from the Boardwalk, and they're willing to say, if you want to work in a property, you have to park here, right. or you have to take a shuttle here. They're willing to do that because what happens is, is people that are working here taking up a parking spot for twelve hours, that takes two spots away from from tourists customers. and customers. So obviously, they want. Um, they want a solution like that. And then well, they, they, it was also a talk, I, I talked to Kevin the other night, Kevin and Vinny, about the possibility of doing a shuttle service. Well, I've looked into that, and we're trying, the problem is the time suggests, you know, you have 6 o'clock in the morning, you're talking 6 o'clock in the morning for the breakfast crowd, you're talking 1, 2 o'clock in the morning for the, the night crowd, and, and it's, it's, it's not cheap to have a shuttle service. <coughs> Well, we're working on it. A shuttle service, though, wouldn't you have to have a dedicated lane for that no. bus to come back and forth? No. I mean, then he's going to get jammed up in the traffic <coughs> as much as the cars are. Well, traffic is bad certain any, times. Any. Certain times, certain times you get traffic moves. It, most of the time it moves. There's some days, no matter what you do, you're gonna, you'll never find a parking spot, and you're going to sit in traffic for hours, and there's nothing we're going to do about it. Even if we put five more lanes in, we'd have the same problem. Um, but this is an everyday occurrence that these that this, that this, these kids that are working the beach are spending, and you know, if they can't find a cheap parking spot, they're going to spend twenty, thirty dollars on a parking spot. Half their pay is gone for the day. So yeah, they park in front of people's homes. That's what they think. Yeah. That's what they do. And the problem is, it wouldn't be a problem if they weren't fresh about it. There are some well, that are wonderful, you know, and some yeah. others are are just horrible. There's a and good ten percent that are just not you good. You don't want to open your mouth though, because if you do, you've got a car there, you've got property there, so you just have to be quiet. Yeah. I mean, we told we told some guys this year that we're waste that people, and the word got out. And we didn't have a problem after. And I, I talked to Jimmy Trainer and I talked to uh, Kevin. 
and said, you know, just tell your staff. We'll work with you. On, on the weekdays when we're slow, we do give a discount to the wait staff. We charge them, if we're charging 10, we charge them five, okay? And on the weekend, if it's a slow weekend, I just don't collect $10 and we're not to collect any for the wait staff. But it, 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 is a, it is a question that needs to get addressed and maybe it's time for all of, all of the pocket people to sit down and talk together and maybe we can be up so many spaces each. Right. Well, then we talked to, um, I talked to Mike Hausman from the state and they've done some pilot programs of keeping the state lot open later. So that's coming. Because it used to be you had to be out of that lot by what, 8 o'clock? 8 o'clock, 4th of July, they right. told them out, 8 o'clock. So we're working on that. Um, you know, maybe they go meters there, and then they can make money hourly. You know, right. Who knows what, what would work for them. You know, I, I don't see why, um, why that lot can't be open. It just doesn't make any sense. I understand that they could do a certain section that's away from the, the nightly campers that are there, so they're not disturbed. There's got to be a way, and, and, and they seem receptive. The, the states really works well with us, so. And we have a transportation meeting in October to discuss very, very Do you know the date? I believe it's the 5th. 58th, 50th, Brian, is that the 8th uh, for the commission? Yes. Right. Yes. All right, anybody else have any parking or questions? Or well, I do. Yeah? Um, I'm wondering how they determine where to put these signs and uh, why the residents of those streets were not notified as to why they were going to do what they did. And and we weren't notified. So I don't know who we we try, we tried to go through the public property the property channel, but we're not making much headway. So um, they came down, they marked the streets, and that's how we found out that they were marking. They were, when they were putting the signs, and one sign was pretty much in our driveway. Right. So we Where do you live? Diane Lane. So you're talking about the no parking yes, the, 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 the right, town. Right. Side street. And, and the kids would come along and they park right on the edges of the street. And I can understand why the fire trucks and the ambulance are making can't make that right. corner. But I've never seen, as long as we've been up here, we've been up here almost 40 years. And they, I don't see anyone go down and, and tell those kids to uh, pull, um, tow their car or give them a ticket. So it's, it's frustrating oh, because yeah. with us on, a, on the side of the street where they want to put it on our side, on the north side, we have the smallest amount of driveways. Mm -hmm. The other side of the street has most of them have double driveways. So we have four children that come up with their children, and that was there's going to be a problem for the residents down there. Not only me, but others also. But we're not too sure where we. So nobody side. discussed with you which side to put it on. They made a decision up at so the town hall. Well, oh, it would have I to be the Fred. It would have, would it would have nothing that's to do with us, actually. Right. Right. It would be Fred Welch and and yeah. the people uptown uh, that work for the town. I mean, right. I, I did you contact them? That was yes. the, that was the fire chief, the police chief. I think. That, I mean, yeah. We got a, a notice. A friend of ours went back to, to the town meetings and all that. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, and it just makes a general statement. It doesn't come right out and tell you how it was determined they were going to notify the residents. I don't know how they notified them. They I, I, I'm not they didn't. Te technically, cha technically challenged to tell you the truth. So it's just... I think, unfortunately, um, I was told that there was a public hearing. And unfortunately, a lot of people aren't here when, 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 or aren't privy to the public hearings because whether they're not residents or they, it's just a summer home or something like that. And that's what happens. You miss out on what, what to, no, to get your voice heard. I don't understand why we weren't notified. Mm -hmm. I, I got a letter. Everyone, in, huh? everyone on those everyone streets on was street told. Didn't get it. No, I didn't get a letter. Yeah. I'm well, the town it. said they mailed a letter to everybody on the south, on the west side of Ashworth Avenue yeah. from the town parking lot to the end. 
everyone was supposed to have gotten yeah, a letter. That was Brown F. That's why yeah. they, they weren't included in that time. Maybe they didn't do the Brown F. Brown F. area they did no. not do. Well, if they I know they did tunnel, they did rag. No. We, we all... We all got one. Yeah, I got one. No. Well, that's so did you lose parking and you lose parking on your no, street? What they did is on our street, you can, uh, when you're coming down like Tunnel Fellows, it, oh, on our street, yeah. or you can park on the north side, you can't park on the south yeah, side. That's on what they're doing. Really you can park on the south side, you can't park mm -hmm. on the north. On Fellows, I don't think you can park on either side. Neither no, side. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. Because the problem is we keep taking parking away. They took parking away on all the leather, leather streets because it used to be two sides. And that's nice. They're nice and wide. And else, but we're not replacing the parking. I mean, this lot that we just did is the first new parking in years. Um, so as a resident, excuse me just one minute, as a resident on that street, I was wondering who, uh, who I would go to to ask if they could put a sign on the corner stating no parking from this sign. To the corner, and that might solve some of the problems. I would go to Mr. Welch up at uh, the town hall. They well, did that say would be his that they would review this parking arrangement they made this summer was a, an experiment of sorts, and they said they would be welcoming feedback from people like yourself after the season. But how do you get that going? You, I, at this point, you're not going to get a notice. You should go to the town manager and well, express your concern. Oh, okay, well, what about, um, what about I, I would what? gather there are other people on your street who are also upset who they did not, were not notified, correct? Right. Then That's I would get a, a petition up and send it right up there and have them do it at the select prince meeting. Saying well, that you're displeased, you've never received it. That's in the process right now. You know, well, that, that's what that's I would do, process. to get it read at the select prince meeting. And we, ha we have some great selectmen now that I think, uh, they would, they would listen to you. So you might want to go right to one of the selectmen. The chairman is Rick Griffin. He's a beach resident. So. You might call him and ask him to come down and look at your situation. I'm sorry? Rick Hare is his business. You call Eccentric Hare and ask for Rick Griffin. He's a very, he's a wonderful gentleman, and he's the chairman of the select board. <laughs> it is, it is, it is, it is, five eight five five. Doesn't pay to have a business in the town. There you go. But I would, I would call him and just, and just talk to him. About it. His name is Rick Griffin. He's the chairman of the select board. All right. So let's move on. Unless we have anybody else. Still oh. speaking. It's a It is. Suppose you the police don't find a down. I don't see any records of no, which they did on Joanne, and to be perfectly honest, right going around that corner in Babcock. Oh, right. right. I mean, oh, we yeah. had, in Babcock has terrible problems, terrible right. problems. Right. Problems that's with why they, people that's talking why, in that shouldn't be? Yes. Okay. Terrible. Right around, right starting with Joey and going around the corner. The only relief we have now is as you go to the left, there were environmental concerns. So they came down and made that no parking and no dumping. We used to have people that leave the beach that dump in that beautiful area. But now they straighten that up, so it helps a little bit. All right. Anybody else? But I would bring the, again those concerns for get all of your neighbors while they're still here. Yeah. See. Now they'll come back for seafood festival. Yeah. Yeah. You need you need to do that. I, I did talk. I've spoken with a couple, and they're willing to. Okay. Go to the meeting. You're on Diane. Oh, 
Well, thank you for hearing me out. Well, thank Anytime. you. Bob, do you have any old business? I just want to give a shout out to Maureen and Glenn in particular, and John for the promoting of the talent contest. I was amazed at the quality of the talent that appeared for that contest. The children's section, which quite honestly could have been your granddaughter's recital, or, you know, and on up from there, was fabulous. These kids were so competent. It, you'd pay to hear these kids perform. They not only had the talent, they had the presence. And this thing doesn't happen by accident. Maureen and Glenn and John have devoted enormous effort into this. In fact, I think probably we're going to have to look at this next year and figure out a way to get them a little help, maybe administratively in some way. They're, we're probably asking too much of them for this particular effort because it's a three-day effort when it's put on, and then there's all the pre-effort to sort out who gets to go on. Just, I thought they did a fabulous job. Good job. Well, I mean, you have any old Thank business? You. Can you. Thank uh, you, Bob. Can you, with all this... Uh, did I read that right? <laughs> you, no, you missed it. No. Okay. Uh, I'd like to also add to that, um, as far as the Hampton Talent was concerned, um, Bobby and Debbie, Diane, Ellen, and the queen of uh, volunteerism, Barbara Brow, I thank you all for all that you do. Seriously, I, I, we couldn't do it without you. Wow. We couldn't. And I also want to talk about the Children's Week. Mm -hmm. uh, Oda, thank you again. I just, uh, I wish you were there when the little girl came up. And, and the mother said, well, we, we don't have a costume. And you said, yes, you do. You <laughs> and she ended up being a fairy or a princess. Or she was thrilled, that little girl. When we gave away yeah. the show to the it was, it was delightful. It, it, yeah. it did everything I'm sure you wanted it to do, exactly what you wanted to do. Well, like I and said, when my sister was here and my, my niece was in the parade, we tried everywhere to find a costume. Yeah. And we couldn't, and I said it would never happen again. No, well, it doesn't. If somebody wants a costume, there should be costumes there. Yeah. And in the pouring rain, Terry and it Beverly Hollingsworth, and who was the other person with you? Ann Justin. Ann Justin, I'm sorry. Yeah. Ann, Ann turned out the three of them in the rain <laughs> with the costumes running across the five meter really. Thank you so much for that. And uh, uh, as far and, and Julie and Kathy, uh, the, the other um, judges, and the idol, thank you so much. Um, it, it does take a village. <laughs> There's a lot of people involved in both of these events. And even though it rained, I'd say I'm going to make a wild guess. Maybe a hundred and so people showed up. It was very good. I we was had to. Really yeah. Well, so it was. Uh, we had to skip the parade by because it was pouring, torrential downpouring rain. But we ended up. People called the chamber, and thanks to the chamber, that they told everybody to meet at the uh, at the uh, seashell. And we had a nice big crowd. And the Continentals good. came. And I like this better because they didn't stay down low. They came on the stage, yeah. which gave me access to the microphone and the Continentals, <laughs> which is <laughs> perfect for me. Is that a band? <laughs> yes, they were they fabulous. Play, they they play so play I've never heard that. Oh, next. stop it. They were wonderful, and I thank they them as well for all that they do. And there's a lot of, they made it a lot of fun for us, too. And, all right, uh, now that we're telling everybody, um, Go back to John and Bill and um, uh, movie night. Movie night. Yeah. It's the best know. bang for the buck Absolutely. you can imagine. Absolutely. There's some nights there were five, six hundred people out there, and I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> Am I lying on that one? It, it was. It just was fantastic, and that was a lot of work, a lot of setup. Um, we were lucky we didn't have any really heavy winds this year to pull you guys out to see with that <laughs> with that uh, screen. Are we getting a bigger screen? I don't think it can. <laughs> no kidding. There you couldn't find space. a bigger one? There are bigger screens. And I mean, if you've got 500 people now, you're going to need... Well, the problem is you have people all the way back to the water's edge. Wow. And the tide and comes in, we lose a couple. Yeah. Yeah. Stop. Besides, <laughs> they, they go out so far that the angle's not good. Oh, so, so what do we do now? Well, we got to get stadium seating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, Thank you. I appreciate all you do, John. That, was, that is great. No, Bill, you know, yeah. everyone helps. And Bobby helps with that, too, right? Yeah. Yes, he does. Yeah. Well, he helps with that. I've seen him out there. He does? Yes, he does. <laughs> that movie screen is heavy. Yeah. You want to buy a 300 pounds. <laughs> all right.
And we also got a lot of compliments on our sound system. From not only right, am I right? Not only from the bands, but from the listeners, from the people that they love the sound system. So that was another good thing. Oh, oh, that's I my got favorite more people thing. talking about that. Uh, yeah, it was it was the best. Um, the what was the name of that band? <laughs> the Reminiscence played on Labor Day night, Monday night. So if next year if it's a nice night and you're still here, and please come up. The dancing, were you there? Yes. Oh, it was great. It, I thought it was one of the best because the night was gorgeous. It was a beautiful evening. Yeah. But I mean, it looked like the middle of summer. It didn't yeah. look like the last night. It was wonderful. And I hope we always do that. I hope the weather's always as good, too. All right. Did you want to mention uh, what we're going to do? We, uh, we have to set out for bids. Oh, yeah. I, I would like to. Uh, apparently, the, the fireworks company, RS Fireworks, is, their three years are up this year? After. Uh, they have one more shoot for New Year's. New Year's Eve. And uh, then I'd like to be able to just, just to make sure that we're being fair have all the get a lot of fireworks people so make sure that they can come in uh, and put, the word and put a bit and and uh and well, we'll probably to try to have them either december or january just because uh so we can put it into the budget okay so I'll that's work good that. i'd like to do that one one suggestion to feed back to you from all that we get from the time yeah on labor day weekend if you can have fireworks both on friday and sunday night it uh a lot of people, I think, draw in a lot more local people Friday. Friday night and Sunday night? Friday night and Sunday night. We're pushing, we're pushing the police and the fire with that. Yeah. So I think well, that's... Yeah. And then this year we didn't have the first. Which uh, was a smart the, move. With, there was nobody around. Yeah. But, there, I mean, there were a few people disappointed. But we had it advertised that we didn't have it. But then it got confusing because we always have it on the Wednesday. Will we uh, have next year have, on the Well, they're not going to have that problem because uh, Labor Day drops Labor back Day a couple of days. Okay. So uh, it'll be on the Wednesday before. So All right. this year with Labor Day being so far ahead, uh, there just wasn't anybody here. So I think it was smart. We saved a little money there. It was actually 14 weeks instead of 13 weeks this year. Yeah. Yeah, the next week. Oh, okay. Is there a reason they have the late the evening? Because of the girl getting them off. Yeah. It's getting yeah, the people off the beach. It. <laughs> and that's not dark. Well, you have to have it be dark. Yeah. That's the reason. On, on, on Labor Day, Monday night, it's late for children to be up at 9.30. The only yeah, thing is, Monday two day. things come into play, and I don't know exactly, you might want to address this, John, but one is the tides, and the other one is how dark it is. You can't yeah. shoot them off, even if right. uh, if it's not dark enough, it's a waste. Well, I, I know, know that the SEMA Festival does do an earlier 8 shoot. Because it's, it's so we maybe could do an earlier shoot on Labor Day, but it might confuse people. That's, That's the only thing. I think you would have confusion. Yeah. And I know that on New Year's Eve they do them at eight o'clock because it's dark early, of course. So. Yeah. And playing the Glens. That's what it is. Yeah, so yeah, that's another Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's Glenn's fault. <laughs> okay, well, Glenn, Glenn. And, and isn't the Continentals on that yeah. night? Then? That's yeah. right. Well, they are. On it. <laughs> but the truth is, if you wanted to shoot them early, the band take a break. They're the most, yeah. Continentals are by far the most cooperative, most understanding, uh, easiest group to work with ever. Yeah. I mean, you, you yeah, saw what they did during Children's Week. It just... I did. It doesn't matter right. what you're doing. Mm -hmm. right. The only thing is, I want to say one thing. 20 years that I've lived here, 9.30 has been the time. You start changing that time around. You know, yeah. different nights. It's gonna, people are really going to get messed up. So, um, we do get enough calls from 9.30. Can you imagine if you change that? Because <laughs> <laughs> at 9.30 tonight, 8 o'clock tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I didn't have to cancel one this year, did I? <laughs> It's the wow. most stressful thing watching that radar. <laughs> you have no idea. It is terrible. All right, let's approve the minutes. What do we have here? I want to just don't say something. Oh. You didn't go to, you didn't go to, oh yeah, we did that public first. Is, public is after You're last. Approval. You're after this, but this will take us two seconds. See, when that, we, we changed that years ago so we could close the meeting. Approval of minutes is next. Any new business, did we do that? Yeah, we did that. Oh. All right, page one on August 12th, page two. 
page three. And page four, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? August 12, 2015. Move to approve the minutes as written. Do I have a second? I'll second. Yes. All in favor? Excellent. All right, public comments. Uda. Hi, my name is Uda Penyol, 15 Tuttle Ave. I'm just here to remind the commissioner we have to sign the contract with the traveling wall and they need a thousand dollar deposit. That's all there is. Thank you. Do you have all the paperwork? I got the paperwork. Are you not prepared? All right, any other public comment? I'd like to elaborate on that a little bit. Uda. Yeah, um, there's a lot to be done. You have a list of my long of things have that have to happen. Plenty of lists. Okay, and when are you planning to we put together? We want to make sure we get the dates. For it. You guys, you guys said you wanted the week before Labor Day. Well, now, Glenn, I'm looking at your. I brought you a calendar. I am looking people. at it, and it's lovely. My question is, is it what? She had in mind. You have. Um, I think Uda is looking at having them arrive on the 31st, which would be going last yeah. Wednesday in August. And then turn the page. Ben says veterans. I'm sorry. I'm just toying with terminology. I know. I, I just wanted to see if we're going to do dates. We well, need they to would be coming in the 31st, which is a Wednesday, correct? Yeah. Wednesday, Thursday? No, then we're going to get right into Labor Day. It would have been the week before. Either way, it doesn't matter to me. What it, well, that's the week that's going to be the slowest. Yeah, so we do it that way then. 31st, it's a Wednesday. They come in Wednesday, they set up Wednesday, Thursday, you do the opening sure. ceremony. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday's the closing. Is that, is that uh, Labor Day weekend? Yeah. But they would get right into Labor Day weekend. Is that okay? It's a good draw. Yeah. Is that all right? That's a slow week. Yeah. Right. Slow week. Not okay. this year, but if we do it the weekend before, that would be that that the challenge. Oh, yes. We no. have Children's Week out, and then you have the Channel Project. Yes, you're right. I know. You have Idol and the Children's Week. Right, did we yeah. figure out where it's going? That was member Church Street. For sure? Yeah. All the way, Church Street. Do we have to get... Diane Martins told us we can have Church Street uh, Park. Good. Excellent. Up I would still want to do it down the middle of Ocean Boulevard. Yeah, I would. It was not appropriate. They walk around with their little bikinis, they walk around with food stuff in their faces, drinking dogs, no thank you. The installation requires dirt too, doesn't it? Yeah. They, you have to have a long yeah. so And how dirt. long? Four hundred Almost 400, 300 and something feet. And how long is our parking lot in that? Uh, yeah. We probably could do it there. But there would be no parking. Right. Uh, you know, you've got to need parking for people. Fred actually offered the town park. That's where we're going. The Ashwood one. They need dirt. They don't have dirt. Yeah, they don't have dirt. What they, they actually need is grass. Grass would be nice. Would look nice. That comes on yeah. top of Well, I think then the church street is probably be better than I guess. Church street is a fair alternative. It's just so removed from everything else. But it's easy in and out. Yeah, it is. You, you can know. come, people come down 101, Go across the, the intersection and and uh, right in, turn around and go right back out. We want them to stay. We want them because exactly. they want the people to stay. Yeah. But some of them will not stay. Right, that's fine. Mm -hmm. So have you decided? So so in other words, this is going to go from when to when? They come in Wednesday. The thirty first of August. They leave Sunday. That's how they usually so work. So the setup is Wednesday. The, the ribbon cutting is Thursday. Opening yes. time, usually around it, anywhere from <coughs> 11 to noon, that's depending on where. Gloss the headed at 11. Five day event Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Ooh. Saturday, Sunday? No. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. They come in Wednesday late afternoon and they set it up. August 31st. 
That's usually how it goes. Okay, so it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Four days of actual. And I'm calling that week Veterans Week. I see that, yeah. Something. And All right, now. I okay. think to complement what we're doing, we need to do. We need to talk to the town for sure that right. that date's okay. Diane told me that's right before we can have it. Because I, when I really wanted to go was Chuck Field, which is beautiful, but they have games every night. And there's no other room. Where are you going to go? The parking lot by the town hall is not big enough. The parking lots down here are not big enough. State Park. State, State Park. Park. Thanks, Max. They never got back to me. I was up and talked to him. I gave him all the paperwork. He never came back. Brian Wilson. Brian Wilson, correct. They won't give up that you can they fill that parking lot? Right. They get you, more parking up there. I know. It makes right. sense. Are you going to want uh, 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 like a setup for band for band up there? Plus chuck. What do you mean? Near the wall, you know, some place for them to go. All oh, that well, just happened on the stage. Bad Piper or the ROTC play something. Okay. Not band, bands. Okay. Not a concert. A concert. Right. Okay, but is that something they would need a stage for? Yes, we would need a stage for speakers too. I just happened to have been, been in Gloucester in July, and the one thing I did not understand it could be because I don't really understand the history stuff. They had Vietnamese people dressed in their um, costume. Which I didn't understand, and they had bilingual speakers there, Vietnamese people speaking up on the stage. I didn't quite understand all that. I don't know if it has to do because they were South Vietnamese and they were fighting for them, or I didn't understand that. I don't. I don't. Are there Vietnamese names on the wall? No, they're just American names on the wall. That's why they don't understand it. Why a Vietnamese, and there was grandkids running around, an older guy, an older woman, their kids, the grandkids, and they all had the Vietnamese outfit on. The native dress. Yes. I just couldn't understand that. Well, that, that was, it's the Vietnam Wall, isn't it? Yeah, but it's supposed to be a yeah, tribute to the American soldiers. Yeah. Why would exactly. It's not just, I, well, I, I didn't fought, get that. We fought on one side. Right. right. So right. Was yeah. a civil war. So that was that there was a civil war. So obviously they were um, I just didn't understand it. Honoring our vets for helping yeah. them. Remember the both people, all the people that had to leave. I grew up with totally different stories. We never discussed Vietnam War. I grew up in World War II with prisoner of wars in Russia. My uncle was a prisoner of war in Russia. He came back with no legs. Every time he pissed my arm off, he took his wooden legs away. This is what I grew up with. No, I, sure know. I don't know. We never learned that in school. I, was, I would still you know, I, that's, and the, and the uh, lot of people from Vietnam, South Vietnam had to leave. I understand all that. Right, but I, we never learned that. So that's probably never why interested me, and I just couldn't understand what they, why they were up there. That's probably why. That's the thing. All right, so I guess now that you have the dates, 31st, you're going to confirm those. Uh, what's her name there? Diana. And then you need to form your committees, correct? Correct. So when do you, when do you think you'll be starting that? After Seafood Fest, I have all the time in the world. All right, good. That's my answer. So thank you. All right, any other public comment? Yes. My name is John Joint Jr. I'm, uh, first of all, I want to thank you guys for the gift certificate for the sand sculpture event. And I was wondering whether or not you guys had the date for next year. I don't think, we haven't uh, yeah. met with him yet. I'm yeah, not sure what it is, John. We haven't met with uh, Greg. Greg. Greg yet. Oh. It's up to him to meet. Why you want to do your what vacation for next year? He wants to book his room, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, the locations, the room, and all that stuff. I think the only way, the best way we can do it is to have, we will be having a meeting with him, and then maybe you could call Greg and ask him 
All right. Because I, I'm sorry, John, we haven't done that yet. Yeah. I'm yeah, sorry? Well, June 10th. Yes, yeah, take a look at your calendar. That's my yes. June 10th. That's too early. That's early. That's early. That's early. That thing's going to be up for a month. Yeah. I have your email address. I can assume it's yeah, that would be good, Brian, if you could do that at the moment. We'll figure it out. Will we? I would say like second or third week of June. Well, I, I, we have to I'd say the seventeenth. Yeah, yeah, the seventeenth would be the drop. Yeah, I'm sixty-seven. Looks like that. It would be the seventeenth. If we get a bad week of those, I know. Be in school. They will. But yet they won't be in school that next week, and that would be the week everything happens. Seventeen, eighteen would be the build-up and stuff, and then come that's twenty-first. That sounds right. I'm just guessing. We'll probably drop it in on the 17th, and then that would be the week that we get the stuff done. Yeah. We have to have the actual vision to be awarded. We leave it up to the week. One, two, and then the third. Oh, yeah. 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 Opposing comments, Maureen? No, I think I'm all set. Just to thank everyone again for all the help for this summer. I think we had a, a very good summer of events, and I thank everyone of all. Bob? I would just echo Maureen's sentiment. I, I want to wish everybody a great seafood festival. I want to wish the chamber a lot of luck. We have a lot of... Uh, yeah, a lot of problems to deal yeah. with, and hopefully the weather will hold up. That's old. I also talked to Senator Stiles today, and she there was a Rising Tides conference on October 24th and 25th, and there's going to be quite a few people down here. They're on their own for whatever dinners and stuff they have, so I urge any of the businesses to realize there might be potential for some business for dinners or breakfast. So just so you know, there's, there's a loop coming. I'm not quite sure what the Rising Tide Conference is. Uh, I just found out about it today, so I'll look into it as well. Is that the Ashworth? At the Ashworth, yeah. Yes, is, is there any more communication regarding the fishing industry and how it's affecting the tide? They're still waiting. They're still waiting to hear from the federal government on dates when the fishing well, and and stuff, but it's definitely affected a lot of people. Yeah, it seems it's the fishing. Yeah, it's no hat, it's no cod right now. Okay. All right, on that note, it will end the meeting at 6.53. Thank you.